Welcome back to the Transform with MG podcast, where we'll talk all things transform in your body, health, and mindset. So it's officially summer, and with summer also comes a bit of pressure to look a certain way. You might have holidays coming up, there's a lot more spontaneous events coming up, trips away, and in general, just wearing lighter clothes, so you might want to feel and look your best, and that's absolutely fine. However, there also is a pressure in order to achieve a certain physique in a short amount of time. Realistically, we're in the middle of June, and the best time to start was about three months ago, but don't worry, it's not too late. I'm going to give you some practical tips today that you can apply from now on in order to start getting closer to the goal that you want to achieve and in order that you feel good both physically but also mentally because come on here we're prioritizing your well-being and your mental health alongside of getting in the best shape that you want. I'm really sick of seeing all these four-week diet shreds and supplements to shred belly fat or help you lose god knows how many kg in an unrealistic period of time and to be honest yes they might get you to a place where you want to be but they by all means are not going to be sustainable and they probably will leave you worse off than you even started because chances are the quicker that you lose weight the quicker you're going to regain it so today i want to share with you five tips in order to make a change in a sustainable way one be realistic with what you can achieve in the time frame that you have. If you have a holiday coming up in, say, six weeks, then don't expect to lose 10 kg or gain 5 kg of lean muscle tissue. Results take time and they're not going to happen overnight and you need to be realistic with what you can achieve in the time frame. So before you jump into your new exercise and diet plan, consider what you want to achieve and how long it will take you there. Building muscle is a long process that requires a structured training plan, consistency, progressive overload and managing your nutrition you can expect to see some meaningful changes in six months, eight months, not weeks. And while fat loss is not as lengthy process, if you want to maintain the fat loss results that you achieved, then it's also going to take time. I don't want to discourage you. This does not mean that you're not going to make any changes in six weeks, but you just got to be realistic with what you can achieve. Because if you set the bar too high, then you're going to get to week six and you're going to feel disheartened by how much you have achieved. At the end of the day, you don't want to get to an end point and not be able to sustain it, right? You want to make meaningful habit changes along the way that will allow you to maintain the results that you've got. Tip number two, the three plus two nutrition method. One of the biggest factors that you will have to control are your calories. I'm going to use fat loss as an example because it takes a shorter period of time in order to see some visible changes. So if your goal is fat loss and you want to lose some body fat for your holiday, we're going to use the example of six weeks. Then you will need to put yourself in a calorie deficit in order to drop that body fat. This means eating below your maintenance, eating less than you're burning. Now, me telling you to be in a calorie deficit is not really giving you any practical advice because it's not really about calculating the exact calories you should be eating, but actually adhering to that deficit. So I'm going to give you a method that I use myself and I also use with my clients that actually helps them to adhere to a calorie deficit. The 3 plus 2 nutrition method focuses on having three balanced meals across the day and one to two snacks. This means that you're eating every three to four hours and not leaving too much of gaps in between your meals to allow yourself to get too hungry. And while, yes, I talk about calories being like one of the most important factors, you can't expect to eat however you want whatever you want and still have loads of energy and still have a motivation to eat well you need to have some sort of a structure that will allow you to stick to a certain diet plan that you set out for yourself so once you have your calorie deficit number figured out then make sure you apply the three plus two nutrition method in order to help with your adherence to your nutrition tip number three is protein so i'm going to dive into more detail on the calories because once you nail your calories protein is going to be your best friend protein is going to help keep hunger at bay 
But not only that, it will help you maintain any muscle you have built so far if you're in a fat loss phase, will help you build new muscle tissue, will also help you recover from workouts, which means that you'll be able to train with the same intensity throughout the week and able to recover quicker. By preserving as much muscle as possible when you're in your fat loss phase, this is how you achieve that like toned and defined look. So let's keep the protein high. As I mentioned with having three balanced meals, make sure that each of those three meals has a serving of protein. A serving is somewhere between 20 to 30 grams and that will just ensure that your meals are actually keeping you full and satisfied, which in turn will also minimize snacking and in turn help you stick with your diet. So as you can see, everything is kind of linking up here. There's a reason behind doing everything and not just me throwing out random advice without having any explanation on why you should be doing it. Tip number four to get summer ready is to increase your step count goal. 10,000 steps is being thrown around. To be honest, it's a good marker to aim for. It's not a magic number, but it keeps your activity levels high throughout the day. What's the most important is that you're kept active outside of your workouts. If you think about it, your gym workout or your run is only taken up about an hour of the day and you might be working three to four times per week that's only four hours in the week what are you doing all the other hours that you're not sleeping you need to factor in regular movement so i think ten thousand is a good target to aim for but again if you're somebody that's only doing an average of two thousand steps 10,000 steps might feel overwhelming. So what I would say is increase your step count goal by 4,000. So whatever number you're doing at the moment, it could be 5,000, increase that to 9,000. If you're already doing 10,000 pretty easy because you have an active job, then increase that to 14,000. Steps are such an underestimated form of exercise. People freak out that they miss their one hour gym session, but then complete, but then spend the rest of the day sitting on their ass. While steps may sound like a really simple tool to help aid fat loss, they actually are great because they're low intensity, which means that you can continuously do it throughout the day without feeling too fatigued. Whereas with a workout, you're more than likely, if you trained intensely, you won't be able to repeat that workout in the next couple of hours. But you shouldn't freak out about missing one gym workout. You should be really more concerned how active you are throughout the days. And my last tip to get you summer ready is to prioritize your sleep. Sleep is definitely the magic pill to weight loss and not many people are talking about it. And why is sleep so important and why I keep drilling about it is because when you don't get adequate amount of sleep or you're sleep quality is very poor, your hunger and satiety hormones are all over the place. This means that your hunger is through the roof and you can't get satisfied with your meals, which means that you're constantly craving. And you're usually craving things that are high sugar and high carb to just get that dopamine hit. If you don't get enough sleep, your energy levels are also low, which means that your motivation to move your body, to exercise and train is also gonna be a rock bottom. So you should focus on getting at least seven to nine hours of sleep and two tips that will help you get there is one cut out caffeine at around 1 or 2 p.m and sorry if you're that person that's saying you can drink a kind of monster and go to sleep and it doesn't affect your sleep then you're lying <laughs> it's like whether you like it or not it still stimulates your brain so although you might find that you're falling asleep doesn't necessarily mean that you're getting a good quality sleep and the second tip that I have is try and implement some sort of a nighttime routine ritual and it could literally be something like switching your phone off about 20 minutes before you go to bed and it sounds simple it's not that easy to do especially when you go down the rabbit hole of scrolling through TikTok because I've been there and honestly it could be like two in the morning and god knows what sort of content I'm looking at at this stage so the best thing to do what i found helped me massively to try and get off my phone is actually plugging my phone on the opposite side of the room on charge 
and on airplane mode. And I'm, I just don't look at it. I'll go to bed. I'll write out like my to-do list for the next day. I'll read a bit of a book and at least that helps me to just switch off my mind. So these are my top five tips to get you in the best summer body in a sustainable way. So you feel good, you look good, and you're able to actually maintain your results. Now on to this week's questions. How can you increase your protein intake throughout the week? Protein intake is one of the biggest things that people struggle with when they come and work with me initially. And I don't want you to get disheartened if you're not getting to your target initially because it actually happens to so many people. I don't know what it is, but our diets just don't consist of high protein foods unless we make a conscious effort to change that around. And as I mentioned in previous episodes and in the and at the start of this episode, protein is going to be very important. So some of the ways that you can increase your intake throughout the day is one, is actually a very obvious one and the easiest one that you could literally implement right away. And that's simply to increase the quantity of protein you're already having at every opportunity you're having a protein intake. So say, for example, you're having a chicken sandwich for lunch and you're only using two slices of chicken, like increase that to five slices. If you're having a spaghetti bolognese for dinner and you're using minced meat, instead of using, I don't know, 100 grams of it, use 200 grams. So this allows you to increase your protein intake without necessarily adding additional foods into your diet. So that's like the easiest way to increase your protein intake. Second thing would be to ensure that you're starting your meal with a protein. So anytime you go to build a meal or whether you're going out to a restaurant, you're always looking out whether it has a protein option. Protein options include any meat, fish, tofu, eggs, Greek yogurt. So whenever you're looking for like a choice, then you're always making sure that it has protein and that already puts you way closer to your target if you decide to make a meal like pasta and sauce without anything else added to it because you're essentially having carbs there. And another reason why you should consider having balanced meals as opposed to just opting for one type of food in a meal is that it's going to help you regulate your blood sugar levels. So if you're eating foods that are quite high in carbs, it's going to spike up your blood sugar level and what goes up has to go down. So this is why I'm so big at like balancing your meals because it allows you to keep your energy levels stable rather than having like sudden spikes and then sudden drops. Another way that you can increase your protein intake is to swap out certain foods for high protein foods. So if you're having plain yogurt, let's say, why don't you swap that out for Greek yogurt? If you're having regular milk, you could be having protein milk. And instead of cereal for your breakfast, you could swap that out for oats. So doing different food swaps, which are kind of similar in nature, but have an different protein content will also allow you to hit protein intake throughout the day. And lastly, you could invest in a protein shake. I spoke about protein shakes in the other episodes, but to be honest, they are a safe and convenient way to reach protein target, especially if you have exhausted all the things that you could do in terms of like managing protein intake through your diet. You could look into just supplementing with protein powders, either in the form of shakes, you can add them to oats, you can add them to yogurt bowls, you can bake with them. So make your own like protein treats. Um, And that'd be just like a convenient way to like get you over kind of that line. Maybe you're missing out on like 20 or 30 grams to reach to your target. It'd be a convenient way. But yeah, there are a few ways that you can kind of manipulate your diet at the moment. Next question, how to stay on plan while on holidays? 
the philosophy I live by and I also coach my clients that way is that you shouldn't put your life on hold in order to achieve your fitness goal. You can have the cake and eat it too, baby. Like the, the whole part of be living a healthy lifestyle is life itself. Like you should be able to have fun. So whatever health or fitness goals you have, you should still be able to go on a holiday or trip away without feeling completely deprived or coming back back with severe guilt. And this is where my method of compromise, not sacrifice, comes into play. So I want you to view your holiday or time away as a cruise week, right? So you're still making decisions and taking actions that are aligned with the end goal that you have, but you're taking your foot slightly off the pedal and allowing yourself a little bit more freedom when it comes to food and maybe reducing your activity levels. So this means that you're maintaining the results that you have already achieved, but also being okay that you might might not make progress in that week, especially when it comes to fat loss, but in return, you're acquiring new experiences and you're prioritizing exploring new places and time away with your loved ones. So there is that balance. I mean, you can't expect 100% of the results if you're only going to give 60 or 50 percent of your effort but it's okay like you shouldn't feel guilty for wanting to prioritize other things outside of your fitness goals but that also doesn't mean that you have to completely throw it in the towel now let's talk about the compromise and not sacrifice because let's face it you still will have to make some mindful choices and and not completely throw it in the towel if you want to come back feeling good so let's talk about some tips that you can apply to stay on plan on your holidays one pick your indulgence if it's not a fuck yes, then it's a no. There will be so many temptations while you're away, but you don't have to say yes to all of them. Choose the things that you're really craving and then just say no to everything else. Two, practice mindful eating and stop when you're full. Just because something is in front of you doesn't mean that you have to lick the plate clean. You're not a bin. You shouldn't just fill your body with everything that's put right in front of you. I know there's some sort of a guilt maybe associated with the fact of like wasting food when you order something but like if that's the case just ask the restaurant to put in a takeaway box and bring it home with you and maybe decide whether you want it later on in that day or the following day three plan ahead of time pick a meal that you want to have the most freedom around usually for most people this is going to be dinner where they just kind of want to have whatever is there on the menu and maybe paired with a couple of drinks if that's the case then choose a light breakfast and lunch something high protein high volume you know with like fruits and veg that is still gonna keep you full until dinner but it's gonna give you a little bit more calories to play around with tip number four do one activity every single day even if you're going on like a beach holiday to relax do something to move your body this doesn't mean that you have to do a full-on gym workout especially if there's no gym in your surroundings but it could be starting the day with a body weight only hit session it could be going out for a walk on your lunch time it could literally be anything that you fancy but do something for your body because it's going to benefit you long term one it's going to and make sure that you're in that routine of exercising so that when you come back from the holiday it doesn't feel so hard to get back into exercise two it's just going to make you feel good and lastly you want to stay hydrated especially if you're going away to a hot country we can really easily mistake and thirst for hunger so sometimes we might be craving food but really, we just need a glass of drink. And while you can apply some or all of the tips that I just mentioned, the most important thing is your mindset because it's rarely the trip away, the holiday, or like an event in isolation that takes a toll on the progress, but it's how you approach coming back from it if you're going to be in the mindset that the holiday is just continuing on and you're not getting right back into your routine then this is where you're going to start and this is where you're going to find it really hard to maintain any progress that you have achieved and might start going backwards same with if you decide to completely restrict yourself right after holiday because you have like this severe guilt attached to you what's going to happen is that you'll be able to sustain this restrictive diet and exercise regime for maybe a week and then you're going to bounce back and you're going to fall into this hamster wheel of like yo-yo dieting so your mindset would be the most important thing 
you got to remember that a short trip away is only a small percentage of the whole year. It's not what you do on occasion, it's what you do repeatedly that actually gets you great results. Next question, what can I do for more beneficial recovery? So I think this is where most people get wrong because when they think of recovery, they're like, what stretches should I do? What exercises should I do? What supplements should I take? But the most fundamental things that you need to focus on if you want to aid your recovery is your nutrition and sleep. So in terms of your nutrition, protein. I know I sound like a broken record about protein, but protein is your best friend when it comes to repair of muscles. What happens when you train is you break down tiny muscle fibers. In order to recover, in order for them to grow bigger and stronger, in order for you to be able to train more intensely come the following session, you need to be consuming enough protein. Second thing is your sleep. So what is it about sleep that helps recovery? When our bodies enter deep sleep, otherwise called non-REM sleep, our bodies release a growth hormone, which is responsible for muscle repair and growth. Also, another thing that happens when we enter deep sleep is we see an increase in blood flow, which brings oxygen and nutrients, and that helps to repair muscle and also replenish cells. So protein, and sleep are going to be your best friends when it comes to maximizing your recovery. Moving on to the next question. Is creatine a good supplement to take and why is it recommended? Seeing a lot about it, but I'm not sure if it's something that suits me. So creatine is one of the most recent supplements and it has tremendous benefits, not only associated with training, but I've been seeing it thrown around as if it's some magic unicorn dust and that it's gonna give you these magical unreal results without actually putting in the effort required. So let's break down what creatine is, how you should take it, why you should take it, and whether it's actually worth your money. First of all, creatine is not some forbidden steroid, and I'm just putting it out there because I know there's a lot of women which are a bit hesitant about taking it because they think it's some off-shelf supplement that makes bodybuilders jacked. So we actually already have creatine in our body and it's a naturally occurring amino acid primarily found in our muscle cells. The role of creatine is to produce ATP, which is the body's energy currency. What happens when we exercise is we use a lot of ATP. What creatine does, it, it helps to replenish that ATP so that we can exercise for longer durations and at higher intensity. So some of the benefits that you can expect from taking creatine is increased strength, increased endurance, increased the ability to train at higher intensities, therefore producing bigger strength gains. And then there has been other benefits shown that creatine produces that have nothing to do with training, like increased focus, concentration, and memory. You can get pouches of creatine concentrate in, on majority of the supplement websites, like my protein, bulk powders, women's best. I mean, almost every supplement website do them. It's probably the cheapest and the most effective, I would say, form of it and um, you would take five grams of it every single day. The most important thing to keep in mind is that you have to be consistent with it. It's not a supplement that you get an instant feeling. It's not a supplement which brings instant benefits. Like for example, pre-workout, when you take it, you, you feel the effects of it within like 30 minutes. It's something that you have to keep taking every single day and you'll get that like delayed benefit of it a couple of weeks a couple of months down the line so take five grams every day and make sure you have loads of water with it and you'll be sorted next question how do you spread out three liters of water a day so the easiest way you can spread out your water intake i would say between two to three liters is a good target to aim for you want to stay hydrated our bodies are made up of 70 percent of water being dehydrated is just gonna give you headaches, migraines, low energy, low mood, like you want to avoid that, okay? So drink your damn water. The way you're gonna spread out your water is, what I found really, really helps with most of my clients is if they have a glass, about 250 ml with every meal that they have. So we talked about the three plus two method of nutrition. So you're gonna be having roughly between three to five meals. You wanna have a glass of water, 
or you know I like my wadi to it or whatever if you don't like plain water it's fine you can have my wadi it's not forbidden um, but have that with every meal also put a pint of water by your bedside locker and have that upon waking up you're sleeping for seven to nine hours without getting any fluid so your body is waking up dehydrated you want to rehydrate it so leave that glass of water and because it's by your bedside locker you're more inclined to remember to drink it another thing is to carry a water bottle with you the whole time i mean a lot of places now have stations that you can refill it which is great i don't know why but water bottles with straws actually help you to drink more water anyway they help me i think it's just because like it's just there and you can sip on it especially when you're like sitting at a desk and you just want something in your hand you can like sip on it with a straw so maybe invest in a pretty water bottle with a straw and that should help and remember it doesn't have to be plain water you can also use other forms of fluids to rehydrate yourself you can use the um, my water you can add fresh fruit into your water like lemon slices maybe some mint to just add flavor flavor sparkling water whatever you fancy like and whatever works for you uh, but that's kind of a way that you would spread your water intake throughout the day next question i use dairy a lot to build up protein could this impact weight loss negatively Nope, absolutely not. As long as you're not lactose intolerant, then there's no reason why you shouldn't be having dairy. Actually, dairy is a very good source of protein. It's also a great source of calcium, which is going to keep your bones healthy and strong. It never comes down to like an individual food or food groups such as dairy that causes weight gain. It's the amount of calories you consume. So if you are if you are consuming so much dairy that it's putting you in a calorie surplus, then yes, that will impact weight loss negatively. But that's like with anything. If you have too much of anything that it's putting you out of your deficit, you're no longer going to see fat loss. So no, absolutely no need to stop having dairy unless you're actually experiencing negative effects of having too much of it. Okay, we have time for one last question. So I would love to try some exercises to lose fat from my upper back. Any recommendations of exercises that won't cause an issue with lower back pain? So there is no exercise to target a specific area in terms of fat loss. You doing back exercises isn't going to help you lose fat from your back. You need to manage your nutrition. Exercise shouldn't even be used as a form of burning calories you're going to develop a negative relationship with exercise and it's going to feel like a chore that might be one of the reasons why you potentially find sticking to a plan so hard because you have weight loss in mind and you're thinking exercise is going to bring that weight loss if that's the case i would really get that out of your head and use exercise as a way of building muscles and improving your fitness levels so no to answer your questions there isn't an exercise that you can lose fat from your back. Now, in terms of like exercises that do not cause too much pressure on your lower back, there is things we can look at. First of all, I would consult with your physio on what you can do and what is safe for you to do. So I'm not a physio, I'm a personal trainer, but we can use exercises that are low impact on your back that you're still able to perform but again they're not gonna lead to fat coming off your back because that's where nutrition is gonna come into play so exercise is not for weight loss exercise is used to make you feel good healthy build muscle improve your fitness and nutrition is one where you manage to either lose weight gain weight and so on okay sorry one more actually we have literally like five minutes but is it bad to do two workouts together so I think this question refers to doing two workouts in one day and I'm not gonna say it's bad I don't think there's such a thing as doing two well there you can't do too much exercise of course but like it's gonna impact your recovery but it's not optimal Basically, if you can do a workout in the morning and then another workout in the evening, you're simply not putting in enough intensity into your workouts. You're not going to be recovered by the time the second workout comes around, only a couple of hours later, which in turn means that you're hindering your progress. Because if you're not putting in enough effort and intensity and you're only half arsing workouts or like flying through the exercises to just simply get them done, then you're just going to be frustrated with 
not seeing results from the gym. I would actually rather you get one workout done and put in intensity and effort into it and you know just train hard rather than you trying to squeeze into but look let's face it if you only have three to four workouts to do in a week there isn't really a reason why you should be squeezing into workouts in one day you have seven days to complete them if four is too much for you because of your schedule then we can reduce that to three if three is too much for your schedule we can reduce that to two but i wouldn't want you doing two workouts in just one day if that makes sense. Right, these are all the questions today. Absolutely brilliant as always. If you did find this helpful and you think somebody else would benefit from listening, then I would really, really appreciate if you could share the episode on your social media or send it over to a friend. If you would like personal guidance on achieving your dream body and mindset, then I'm going to leave the application form below in the show notes or else you can visit my Instagram at it's underscore Martina Gut or at transform with MG and I'll catch you at the next episode.